Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we build or assemble and test fly the FMS P39. Let's get to it. The P-39 was a World War II fighter aircraft, about 9,500 were built. It was a unique aircraft. You can see from the exhaust, the engine was actually behind the pilot. <clears throat> it had a tricycle landing gear, 37 millimeter cannon through the nose, and the pilot to bail out actually had to open a, a side door like a car to um, do it. The other thing it was not turbocharged, so it had to stick below 15,000 feet, but it was very effective uh, with a lot of Russian pilots in helping us win World War II. This model, the P-39, is a recreation of the Cobra II. It was a racer after World War II, a quite good racer, and uh, that's what we'll be trying to fly today. This is the box that the P-39 comes in. It's a very nicely packed box. Everything came uh, fine. It protects it. I'll spare you the detailed unboxing. But inside that box, this is what you get. You'll get a fuselage, electronic speed control, motor and various servos to include retractable nose gear, rudder servo and aileron servo. This is the canopy top, it's just a magnetic hatch in back with a, a notch in front, so a nice little canopy. I think they did a very good job on this. You've got the two tail surfaces. Notice that all control surfaces are hinged very nicely, no gaps. You just have to, uh, the control horns are installed, you just have to connect them up to the arms on the servo. We'll go through how to do that. Same for the rudder. The wing is a very nice uh, unit here. This is the wing right here. Flap servos, aileron servos. Again, everything's hinged and the retractable gear will demonstrate that once we get everything hitched up. So the one thing that, or two things that are not included in the model are you're going to have to supply your own battery and receiver. To get the full speed, it's a four cell battery. I'm going to see if I can fly with a three cell because I have a three cell. I don't have a four cell. So I just have a Thunder Power three cell here. The other thing that you have to get is a receiver. And I'll use my trusty AR Spectrum 620 receiver. Because of the gear and the flaps, you have to have a minimum of six channels for the receiver seven channels if you want to use a stabili stabilization device. The stabilization device is a reflex uh, V2 uh, system. And by the way, I want to point out that the folks at FMS did give me this model for the review. So I want to thank them for doing that. This is a gyro that's installed in the airplane. The problem is, I think back from my airline flying days, I get very uh, jumpy or not sure if I don't have a good understanding of what any autopilot or stabilization system is doing for an aircraft. The directions are pretty complex. I did a lot of research on the internet. I don't have a seven channel receiver and they had different modes for beginner, stabilization, off. Um, I don't know, a beginner should not be flying this airplane. Long story short, I have decided to not install this with my airplanes. The controls will be plugged directly into the control surfaces with the appropriate control throws. So we'll see how that works. Now, just uh, checking with my technical advisor, Rudy, here. If you'd like to purchase a P-39, there is a link in the description to this video. So now that we've gone over everything in the box, it's a very complete um, kit. And basically, we're just going to hitch up a few control surfaces, plug it in, and we should be ready to go fly. There's a sea of wires. So let me take you through the wires. Again, this is bypassing this um, reflex module. This is just connecting everything directly because it'll save you a little bit of time and effort. Remember, the receiver doesn't come with a model, so you'll have to understand whatever receiver you're using, what ports are used for various controls. I dug this up for the Spectrum um, 620. This is in the description. But basically, throttles at number one, aileron two, elevator number three, rudder number four, retract in five, and flap in six. The reflex mode for that stabilization is in seven, but I just have six channels. So let's go through that. 
In the fuselage, the electronic speed control is installed to the motor, so we don't have to worry about that. I did have to make an adapter for the battery, the connector. I use an XT60, whatever you use on that, I had to change that. What will happen is they're labeled quite well. Off the ESC, you'll see for the throttle, okay? So this is a throttle, black wire down, that goes into port number one of the receiver. Port number two is the aileron. Now the ailerons are a little bit more complicated because there are two aileron servos in the wing. They come through here and FMS has given us a very handy junction box where it takes the two ailerons as well as the two flap servos combined them. So what we have for you is just one outlet from the wing. There's a single connector for the flap, a single connector for the gear, and a single connector for the aileron through this junction box right here. So again, the flap would be number six, the ailerons would be number two, and the um, gear would be number five that are plugged into the receiver. The other thing that's handy, you'll notice that this is a connector for channel 5B. Channel 5 is a retract because the system has to talk to the retractable nose gear along with the two wing gears and they do that through this uh, jumper connection in here. Again, you do not have to worry about it. You plug in the single gear that will control all three gears. So that's a very handy thing. The other thing they did that was helpful for you is you'll notice the rudder plug that goes into number four has two connections to it with a Y type of a Y arrangement. The reason for that is you have a rudder servo here for the rudder. You also have another servo here to steer the nose, uh, the nose gear. So that is done for you. It's just connected up right here into one for the rudder. Then finally, a single elevator plugs into, elevator is channel three on the receiver. So that information, you should save a fair amount of time and worry about how to plug it in. Again, I'm bypassing the Reflex V2. The other thing about the V2 that threw me off a little bit, you have to go onto a website, download information to update it with your model. I'm just going to try it with a direct connection, and I think that'll fly, that'll work okay for this model. So what I like to do when I'm building any, building any airplane, or in the case of a ready-to-fly one, um, assembling it and checking everything out, I like to make sure all the electronics are talking, talking to each other and doing what they're supposed to do, especially when you have a little bit more complicated airplane like this where you have uh, flaps uh, that are multiple position and the retractable landing gear that's uh, electrically driven. So what I've done is I've put together the fuselage with the top off and the wing and I've connected everything, all the connectors, to make sure that the servos operate in relation to the sticks, the throttle works, and things of that nature. This is the included electronic speed control. I had to put on the battery connector for my batteries. The battery goes inside here, and here are the installed servos for the rudder and the elevator along here. And when you flip the wing over, these are the servos for the um, flaps, aileron, and retractable landing gear. Again, through that junction box, you just have to plug them in. So what we'll do is we'll turn on my radio. I have a Spectrum DX6 uh, transmitter. I've got a six channel, uh, six channel um, receiver in the model. And for safety purposes, the prop is off the airplane. So the motor starts up for whatever reason, it won't do anybody any damage. I've already binded the um, transmitter to my receiver. It's a Spectrum AR620 six channel receiver. And what'll happen is for elevator, that works fine. You can see the servo there. It'll be a very easy matter to put on the control horns and linkages. The rudder is right there, so that works. Note also that tied into that rudder servo through a Y connector is a servo for st uh, steering. Now notice it is built in this little slider box here so that the servo can move when the gear is retracted. It doesn't do any damage. When the gear is down mechanically, you can see the nose gear does in fact steer. For the ailerons, we can see the aileron servos on the wings. And then for the um, 
flaps, there are three positions on this switch right here, the D switch. This is flaps up, half flaps for takeoff, full flaps for landing. And you can see when this goes down, the flaps go down like this once they're connected. So no flaps, half flaps, and full flaps. And finally, for the landing gear, and that's the gear down. Notice that you can turn it. Notice how the nose gear turns. It's very nice that they put that in. And then to retract it, and that's that. So everything's connected. It works to my satisfaction. And what I'll do now is disconnect it start constructing just assembling the aircraft and explain exactly where each connector goes to get this operating the way you saw it it is a good assembly manual manual from fms for the p39 it covers everything you need to put it together the few, few things like binding you just don't need but here are all the parts in the box identified with a letter and the package details and good pictures um, you just have to read it and it goes together really pretty well. There's just no surprises except for the control rod length, which we'll talk about. And these are some of the parts for the control horns and so forth. So what we'll do now is a very simple process, or should be pretty simple, of simply assembling the model. We'll connect all the connectors like we have gone through. Um, we will install the wing. There are four screws that put that in place, make sure all the wires are connected. We'll put on the two stabs. That is a pretty simple process connect the servos to the control surfaces and then um, put in the prop. By the way, the prop is very nice. Notice it's a four blade prop. It's the first time I've seen a, this is a solid prop uh, for the motor, but this is all will fit into the installed motor. And then we'll be just about ready to go fly after it balances out. So the next thing is putting the model together. So now it's time to hitch up the control surfaces to the installed servos. You can see the servo there, it's built in. You have to put in the control horns. It's not hard to do. They just have a back plate and you screw them in. You can see the holes already in there. And so that, that holds the control horns pretty well. Now the problem is, this is how the control horn was set up with the installed equipment. You can see it's about an eighth of an inch off with the aileron. You cannot screw it out enough to make it level. So we have to go to plan B. I took two pieces of music wire with a Z-bend on the servo and the control surface, overlapped them, and then put heat shrink tubing over that overlap music wire to have enough length between the servo and the control arm. And here is the wing with everything installed. We'll go ahead and test out the servos here in a moment. That's about the right throw. It's a little over an eighth of an inch. And you see the flaps with the takeoff and landing configuration. And here is a view of all the controls set up with the overlap music wire and um, shrink, shrink tubing to keep it uh, long enough for the controls. And there's the aileron, takeoff flaps, landing flaps. So the flaps really work. They're very effective in the real aircraft. Now it's time for the tail surfaces. Um, this is the bottom. You can see a little bit more holes where, you, where you'll put in the screws. Well, that's where the spar goes, the carbon rod uh, spar. To put in the um, halves of the stabilizer, that hole there is where the screw goes into that tab. It's really pretty simple. No glue is required. You get one stab in, the um, reinforcing rod spar goes in, slide on the other one, screw it in, and you're all set. We finished the assembly of the P-39. I'm, I'm very pleased with the quality of the materials, the aircraft. There's a couple things we need to talk about. So let's go over my experience uh, with the P-39, the control throws, and we're, we're ready to fly uh, essentially when we have a good weather day. So here is the airplane itself. It weighs two pound, eight ounces. The battery is uh, three ounces. The electronic speed control can take up to a four cell battery. That is a lot of um, power. I think we'll see when we turn on the engine uh, that the three cell should be enough. I, I happen to have a three cell. So this is the plane. Everything is screwed together. We don't take off any wings. We go to the field. The canopy has a um, magnetic latch in back and just a tab in the front. And you can see there is quite a bit of room inside the fuselage. The battery straps are here for my battery to meet the all-important center of gravity location, which is this mark right here. So about two and a half inches back per the plans. The battery here is okay. So here's the connectors for the battery. 
all the wiring, everything is in place. Um, very nice four-bladed propeller. Um, the spinner fits on fine. Everything is okay. Now, the one thing I wanted to point out that is a little bit different than per normal is these are the methods to connect the control horn to the arm on the servo. If you look here on the elevator, this is exactly how it's supposed to work. It just the, it clips onto a little clevis here on the control horn, and then this Z-bend goes through the control arm. This one worked okay. The other ones, you can see, they're just a little bit too short for the control arm. This one, the flaps, the ailerons, and I had to make my own control rods. What I did was two pieces of music wire. They overlap this distance, heat shrink tubing, epoxy, a little bit of um, wiring to keep them in place to make it long enough to reach the control horns. Everything else is fine. Very impressive nose gear. Nice solid retracts here. Four screws hold in the wing. And then the stab is a couple screws holding all that in. So I think that is the comments that I want to do. And what I'd like to do now is to plug in the battery and we'll look at the control throws per the directions, the retractable gear, and then we're, we're good to head out to the field. So we'll turn on the radio. Make sure the throttle is low. The battery goes in there. Notice it balances very nice with the center of gravity. Let's look at the controls. We'll look first at the ailerons. And this is just over a quarter of an inch throw. So that's about right and in the correct direction. The flaps are on switch D, takeoff and landing. The um, elevator is there and that's about right. And the rudder is left, excuse me, right and left. And notice the nose gear is right and left. So that all matches up, but I had to on the control horns, move it to about 50% of throw. The final one is the landing gear, and I put that, I eventually put that on switch A. So let's hold that up here, and then we'll see the landing gear. And finally is the prop. So I'm gonna hold it this way so we don't blow things off the table. And very carefully put this down, and you can see the props there. So I'm very happy with the finished build. It's a solid model. It, um, no hanger rashes. I'm doing everything. The control surfaces are right direction, right about. Props on there. Everything looks good for a test flight, so we'll just wait for a good day and head out to the field and see about taking the airplane into the air. We're out here at the field for the test flight. It's just a beautiful day. Um, just to show you how quickly this model goes together, this is delivered Tuesday afternoon. It's Thursday morning. We're, we're going to go ahead and fly it. So it's a nice model. I like it a lot. What we'll do is we just connect the battery, do a, a flight control check, then we'll give it for a test flight. All right, flight control check, the elevator, up, down, rudder, left, right, ailerons, left, right, they're in the correct direction, and the throttle, the motor does work. So, so now we'll take it for a test flight. So, time for the maiden flight. Off we go. Beautiful day. Just about hit the photographer. Sorry about that, my lovely wife. And the plane is off and flying. I was pretty nervous on this first flight. It's my first time flying a um, model with retractable landing gear and flaps. Didn't want to look down for the uh, switches. I did get the flaps up, but I kept the landing gear down, which actually worked out pretty good because I could keep orientation on the model. Again, here's the landing. Lined up well with the runway. Flaps worked well. Very happy with that initial landing. So we went ahead and tried for a second flight. Here's the second takeoff, a little bit better than the first. Plenty of power with the three cell, and off we go. Gear and flaps up, and the model's flying great. Very, very happy with the way the model handled. Again, there's no gyros on this, but it was a very honest flyer. It's a fighter. 
Uh, so it's definitely acrobatic, and uh, I think it'll do about anything you want for maneuvers, but very happy with the way it flew. Um, again, less than full power coming in for my final landing. My gear and flaps down. The flaps are incredibly effective for the landing. Got a little bit low, but it was flying well. Could um, keep roll authority, and it landed on the runway and taxied back. So we finished two flights, the two maiden flights of the P-39 here. I couldn't be any happier. This plane absolutely flies great. There was not a um, bit of trim that had to be put in. It had plenty of power. It was a three cell. The flights, because of the video, is about half throttle. So it's got tons of power. If you want to do a uh, four cell, the SC can handle it. And also the no gyros. It, it, I, I don't think it needs a gyro. It just was an absolute true flyer. It's a fighter. It goes fast. Where you point it is where it's going to go. So I apologize that it's kind of small in the pictures, but that's just, it, it, it flies long distance. It flies far out if you fly, but, but totally under control. This is my first airplane with retracts and flaps. So I was happy to get it down in one piece on both landings. The first flight I was nervous enough. I just couldn't remember with surety where the switches were for the gear and flaps. I did get the flaps up and the gear I kept down. That actually helped with orientation. So if your first flights, you may consider flying with the gear down. You just have a better orientation of up and down for the airplane. Second flight, um, takeoff was fine. Plenty of power. Um, didn't threaten the camera person too much. It flew fine. Got the gear and flaps up. It flew fine. Uh, full flaps for the landing. And I got to say, the flaps make a huge difference. They truly, truly make a difference for a plane like this on landing. So the, the flaps are absolutely essential for something like that. So great kit, highly recommend it. Looks good, flies good, goes together quick. Uh, just the things I mentioned with the control uh, horns, that, that's the only thing you're going to have to modify a little bit. But other than that, just a wonderful airplane from FMS.